these kids. What do you figure, Chris? I mean, it's a quarter to six in the morning. You think that those kids are just starting out or just coming home? Well, maybe just passing through. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, there's an awful lot in this world I still don't understand. What, even after 17 years on the force? Don't be a smart rookie, rookie. Tell me, what's the birthplace of this uh, flu bug that your partner's got? What do you mean? You know, Hong Kong, London, Chicago. It's just a 24-hour number. Terry will be back on watch tomorrow. Good. Come on, let's check out Highway 4. miles we got behind us in a mine under eight hours. Now, can that baby fly or can't she? Oh, she's a beauty. You got to tune tight. Yeah, I can't wait to hit those mountain hunting trails. Hey, you hungry? Nope, thirsty. Oh. Here you go. Have yourself a nice day. Listen, uh, my stomach's starting to ache for some good chow. Yeah, well, there's no place to eat around here. Not until we get farther into town. Well, let's lean on it, man. Oh, uh, my time ain't fast enough for you. Listen, dude, I thought you were slowing down to park most of the way. <laughs> Come on. Here you go. Come on. <laughs> ah. What's that, sugar? Low nine. Request code three in pursuit of a late model crew cab pickup. Golden color, souped up. No license identification. Heading north on Highway Four. Ah,
you both know what a couple of fools you are. Yeah, and you loving every minute of it. Just think, if uh, you was back in Brownsville, you'd be sitting out on the highway watching all the diesels go by for excitement. Oh, that reminds me. I ought to call Mama when we have time. She's going to worry when she finds me gone. Well, so we just went off on a little old night camping trip. What's the big deal? She just worries, that's all. You know how she feels about you. Well, if she gets lonely, she can always go over and visit my wife. Two of them would make a good pair. <laughs> Come on, sexy, let's go eat. No, I'm on die. Just bring me an orange pot. No, I'm on die. Just bring me an orange pot. Mmm. Ain't she cute? Fellas. Oh, cheeseburger with the works and a cup of coffee. I have the same thing, only hold the onions. Onions give me heartburn. <laughs> oh, and uh, give me an orange pop to go. Right. This is Ludlow 9. On Stoner Boulevard, 3500 block and doubling back. We lost him. 10-4, Ludlow Niner. All units look for a late model, crew cab, gold pickup. No license ID as yet. Last seen heading north on Stoner Boulevard. Ludlow Niner, continue standard patrol, over. Place is empty. So what? Be nothing to rip it off. Look, all I want to do is get something to eat and bed down. Really, man, my back is killing me. Listen, by tomorrow we'll be busted flatter than your mama's Sunday flapjacks. All right, so we'll wait till tomorrow. Really, man, you know how my nerves get when I don't get enough sleep. Well, anything else, fellas? Fries, onion rings? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Your money. I told you not to do that! Shut up, partner. It's one thing after another with you, man. Don't I have any say? I said shut up. And get the money, Bobby. It's locked. Open it. I can't. I said... Open it. No kidding. The uh, owner locks it up after 12 and takes the key with him. All I've got is a few dollars to make change. You can have it if you like. Where's my orange pop? Honey, can't you see I'm busy? Excuse me. Where's the little girl's room? Out there. Thank you. I'm waiting. Okay. Well, now, ain't that better, huh? Take him in the back hog time, Bobby. Ludlow 5. I might have that gold pickup. Stoner at 24th. Smitty's restaurant. Over. Roger, Ludlow 5. Ludlow Niner, back up Ludlow 5, Smitty's restaurant. Stoner at 24th. Over. Roger, control. Hit it. <laughs> Oh, 
man, hurry up, hurry up. That's the cops. Get over there and keep your mouth shut. You are incredible, man. We're gonna blow it like this. I knew it. What's your problem anyway? Will you shut up? Morning, officer. Whose pickup is that outside? Oh, uh, that's mine. She sure is a pure beauty, ain't she? How long has it been parked? Uh, 10 o'clock last night or thereabouts. Say, I bet I know why you're asking. Saw one could have been a twin come tearing by here a while back, and then a, a police car comes rowing by after it. Don't that beat all? Hate to see things like that happen. I'm going to have to see the truck's registration and your driver's license. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Officer? Sir? You didn't give me a choice. I was provoked. Get out of here. I throw the gun down. Move it! Right. Stay right where you are. I bet you hit, kid. The leg. I mean, he shot me in the leg. Do you think you can do a thing like that and get away with it? Well, you listen to me. And there's a dead cop over there. And there's a wasted one back in there. I never knew how easy a thing like this could be. So I'm going to make the body count three. Bobby? I don't think you should do that. Butt out, Lorna. No, really. Don't do it. Why not? Well, look that sweet face of his. Now, don't he remind you of somebody? Lorna, what the... I'm talking about Calvin. Would you stand by there? My baby brother. Why, he looks just like him. Don't you think so, Wayne? Look, uh, nobody said you could talk. Baby brother, huh? You know, he does look a little, little bit like old Cal. <laughs> See how the corners of his mouth kind of turn down there? That's Calvin to a T. Wouldn't be right to shoot him. Looking so much like family and all. Why, he might even be kin. Like a second or third cousin or something. <laughs> you know something, Sugar? You might be right. <laughs> well, baby brother, I guess this is your lucky day, huh? All right, let's get out of here. Cops come.
Well, as well as can be expected. What can you tell them? One of them is a widow. The other doesn't know if her husband is going to live through the night. All because of some maniac. The killers, Lieutenant. Mike says you don't have much to go on. Gee, Mrs. Stanko, one officer is dead, another's on the critical list. Owen's in there, is injured. You know something? Your husband is right. We don't have much to go on yet, but I guarantee you one thing. We'll find him. What about the counterman at the drive-in? He's got a fractured skull. They cold cocked him before they tied him up. We haven't questioned him yet. He should be of some help. Now, what's Owen's condition? Well, he's all right under the circumstances. He's got a concussion and some dizziness. Mike's in with him now. That's all I remember. It's kind of like a nightmare. And the license plates on the pickup, they were muddy. I think it was an out-of-state plate, though. All right. These descriptions ought to be enough for a start. We can go over all this stuff again when you're feeling a little better. I never came so close to being killed. Hey. You're only out of the academy two weeks. It's not as if they teach a course in it. I guess it's something I'll get used to. No, Officer Owens, killings like this and the people who carry them out, those are things, thank God, you never get used to. The whole thing seems so senseless, unexpected. I keep remembering something Dan said. Officer Corbett. Yeah. About how people can kill for no reason. He told me that. Ten minutes later, he is dead. That way. For no reason. Those jets can almost break the roof off. They fly in here so low. Well, don't you worry about it. We ain't gonna be here long enough to get used to it anyway. How you feeling, Bobby? Uh... Hey, look at I got to cheer you up. I'm doing one of my routines for you. <laughs> Of course, it kind of loses a little without the band marching behind me. Hey, she cute. I just love to see her strut. <laughs> Can't do much with this low ceiling. But, hey, if you could come out in the parking lot with me, I could show you the routine I won the county finals with. Why not? Oh, hey. Come on, shake it Hey, don't you worry, old buddy. We're going to fix you up. Oh, man, this pain. Listen, I gotta have a doc. And that's just what you're gonna get. The pickup's hot. Yeah, losing that truck's gonna be like losing a part of me. But we'll have to dump it and get new wheels. What, with paying the motel bill and buying the groceries and all, we're down to $8 and change. How are we gonna afford a doctor? Well, that's enough for new wheels and a doctor. Well, we can't travel till we get Bobby shaped up. And don't you go calling your mama or anybody else in Brownsville till we get ourselves straight and ready to go home. What about your wife? I've been gone enough before. Out with the boys a few days. She's used to it by now. Now, until we get a doc, partner, just to keep you company. Oh, come on, sugar. Do one of your routines for us. Come on, now. Ain't she cute? I say we are not dealing with pros. They use their names in front of Officer Rollins. Pros don't do that. 
So what I think we have here are three people on a spree. Some cowboys who just don't give a damn. And people like that can be more dangerous than the most experienced criminal in the world. What are the odds he's still in the area? If one of them is hurt, good. They might try to get some medical help. Well, we're going to send out flyers to every medical facility in the city. Are there any more questions? All right, this is maximum effort. Hit the street and dismissed. Oh, parking lot down the street. It's like saying goodbye to a friend. But nobody be the wiser than whoever owns this one comes with the bus car. Hey, I used to know a guy that was a DJ that worked at the uh, big station down in Del Rio. Softest job in the world. Playing records, talking trash, and sucking up a six pack. Hey, maybe that's what I ought to do. I could take one of those mail order courses to learn the rope. Wayne, will you look at that? Look at that ride up they gave us. <laughs> We're famous, huh? Us <laughs> and <some> baby brother. <laughs> really dynamite. Yeah, baby brother owes it all to you, sunshine. You know, Wayne, that's the truth. I think he ought to thank me. Purely does look like Calvin Downey. <laughs> yeah. Purely does, sugar. Purely does. <laughs> I sure do hope you keep those germs to yourself. Don't worry about it. They're having too good a time with me to look elsewhere. You really worried about Chris? He's really into his own head. He, he won't talk about what happened to him. I can dig it. I mean, the guy's practically just from the academy, and he comes that close to being blown away. Yeah, but he can't seem to shake it off. Neither can I. Except for the flu, I might have been his dead partner. Yeah, this looks fine, fine. Now you just act like it's appendix or anything, okay? Okay. to be your trouble. Oh, no trouble, Doc. <laughs> but you make some. What do you want? A house call. You got a medical backpack ready to go? In my office? They're back way out. Yeah, there is. OK, Doc. Let's grab that bag and split out of here. You do one thing out of line, you're a dead man. You get that? Physically, he's going to be okay, but... Yeah, Mike told me. Try to get him to talk about it. If he could do that, it might help. I 
I hear they're springing you tomorrow. Yeah. Looks like it. Yeah. Got you changed clothes. And I'm having your uniform clean so that you don't come back looking like a slob. Thanks. Can I, uh, sit down and uh, rest these weary bones for a few minutes? Be my guest. You know, you are a barrel of fun today. You, you are a ray of dreariness in my otherwise sunshiny life. Hey. You might want to talk about it sooner or later. Why not now? I don't know. I guess I'm just worried. About what? that I might not be cut out for police work. <sighs> that bad, huh? It's like something stuck in my gut, Terry. I've never been scared like that before. I never knew I could be. It, it could happen to anybody. Maybe. Maybe. Hey. What makes you think you're so special? I mean, whether you're a rookie or a 20-year man, scared happens when you got the barrel of a shotgun shoved up your nose. Not that scared. Not that scared. You ever hear the expression, uh, losing the heart? Huh? No. Yeah. Well, it sounds romantic, but it's just the opposite. It happens mostly in undercover work when the cop will have his identity tripped, right? Now, he gets worked over so bad that sometimes he can't get back out on the street because something has gone out of him. He's lost his heart. You think that's what's happened to me? I've lost heart? There's one way to find out, isn't there? Back in the job. But with your head on straight, that's the problem. Whether I can ever get my head on straight after what's happened. I, I think you'll make it. I just wish I could explain why this has gotten to me so bad. Why don't you try, man? Well, I understand desperate people with guns. Do something wrong, and back themselves into a corner, and they have to shoot their way out. And I know I'm maybe going to be the target. I can deal with that. I know I can. Only this made no sense. No purpose. No feeling. So it was like a joke. They're going to blow my head off like it was a joke. didn't. That was an even better joke. Hey, listen to this. La Fonda, Mexico's newest undiscovered resort for year-round vacation living. Hey, that's really something. I don't feel a thing. Yeah, you will when the anesthetic works off. Isn't anybody interested? Sure, sugar. Mexico. I mean, we could live there for a quarter of what it costs here. Less than Brownsville. We don't have to go back there at all if we don't want to. So, what's the story, Doc? I mean, how long before this thing heals? And your main concern is to avoid infection. You'll have to stay quiet for at least a week or risk reopening of this wound. Well, we can't stay here any longer. How about traveling in a car? Possibly. Not for a few days. 
All right. Can I go now? Go? Yes, I've... I've done everything I can. Now I'd like to leave. Well, yeah. I guess you can go, Doc. In a manner of speaking. Lieutenant. Here's a report on that sedan that was taken from the garage where we found the pickup. We uh, heard you call in the doctor that was kidnapped. Description sounded like they might fit the ones that Chris had that run in with. Well, like kidnapping has just turned into a murder one. They found Dr. Hawkins 20 minutes ago. He's dead. Oh, boy. What is it that motivates these people anyway? Well, it can't be the money. They're just nickel and dime it so far. Well, maybe it's just for kicks. Whatever it is, I want them. I want them bad. Four dollars. Had to lock the old man up in the freezer. Wasn't worth the effort. What about my bubble gum? We ain't done so bad. We count those stores. There's over a thousand dollars in cash altogether. I know, but twenty-four dollars ain't worth the gas it took to get us here. Maybe you could write your check for more. <laughs> <laughs> That's real funny, Lorna. You're a regular riot. <laughs> What do you want? You don't sound glad to hear from me, baby brother. Why is that? Seems to me if a person saves your life, the least you can do is say thank you. I mean, um, I'd come over there to see you in person, but we gotta be moving on. <laughs> what? What kind of a sick trip are you on? If you think you're gonna get away with those killings, forget it. Not a chance, baby. Not if I can do something about it. Hey, now, don't you go getting yourself all excited. Might hurt your health. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, say, baby brother, did you see the newspaper? Well, we're the hottest thing since Bonnie and Clyde. And they wrote you up like you was a long ranger. All right, how much? Oh, a little over a thousand. But it's not enough. I need to make one more hit. A big one. How big? A bank. Hey, where's that, where's that phone book? Might as well pick out a nice, friendly one that has a nice, friendly advertisement. Oh, well, uh, I'll just look forward to that. In the meantime, you just keep on trucking, darling. What did he say? He said that um, what he has to say to us, the same person. The three of them are from Brownsville, Texas. The girl has no record. Wayne Shipley was dishonorably discharged from the Army a month ago. Bobby Lewis has a record for robbery and assault. And he has spent time in a psychiatric ward. He was paroled two weeks ago. The counterman at the drive-in has identified Shipley, Lewis, and the girl as present during the shootings of officers Rawlins and Corbett. And Shipley and Lorna Marsh were reliably identified as the couple who kidnapped Dr. Hawkins. Witnesses have identified them at the scene of a half a dozen other armed robberies, liquor stores and drug stores. These people are dangerous and they're unpredictable. 
You have their driver's license photographs. You have a license number of the vehicle and a description of same. If you make contact, I don't have to tell you what you're up against. You want to take no unnecessary risks, gentlemen. That is all. You are dismissed. Off to Rollins. I want to see you over here, please. What are you doing here, Rollins? Ready for duty, sir. That's all. Well, you go home and get some rest. I'll talk to the doctor, and I'll decide when it's time for you to get back in the uniform. I'm not being gung-ho, Lieutenant. This is for me. Owens, oh, so you think I don't know what's going on inside your head? No, I don't think you do. Not exactly. Look, Lieutenant, I'm okay. But I'm not sure I'll stay that way if I have to just go home and... Now, Owens, those are my orders, and that's it. Lieutenant, they phoned me. Who phoned you? The girl did. Lorna Marsh. I could hear the other two laughing and talking in the background. And there's something else I heard. I'm listening. Jet engines. Close. Once real close. Like it was passing overhead for a landing. There's only one airport where jets are cleared, Lieutenant. Just let me check it out. I'm okay. I really am. All right, Owens. If you think you need it, you've got it. Webster is back on duty as your partner. I'll put a couple of more men on this thing. Now, Owens, what I told the others goes for you, too. I've already lost two officers. One is dead and one is on the critical list. I don't want to lose another. You know, I think you're my good luck charm. <laughs> After we get through with this thing, I'm gonna buy you something special for a present. If you could have anything in the whole world, what would you want? Anything? You just name it. I'm gonna have to think on that a bit. <laughs> Maybe... A new outfit, or some record albums. Well, whatever it is, you got it, sunshine. You think Bobby's ready to travel? Oh, yeah. Ready or not, we're gonna hit that bank, pick him up at the motel, and head for the border. Mexico? That's what you wanted, wasn't it? New life, new start. Bye-bye, Brownsville. <laughs> Mm. Be right back. Tropics Motel on 3rd and Dover. for the manager, ma'am. I'm supposed to deliver it to him first. Thank you. Well, now, what's this? This is a bunch of flowers, Mr. Foster. And inside is a gun. Now, smile, friend. Act like we're doing business friendly-like. 
Did you read any newspapers about that dead cop and that doctor? Yes. I wouldn't think anything of making that a bank manager, too. What do you want? $15,000 in 20s, unmarked, and fast. I understand. It shouldn't take long. Well, Mrs. Harrison, could you step over here for a minute? Right away, Mr. Foster. Yes, sir? This young man is picking up an emergency payroll and requires that it be in 20s and new bills. That gets out of the vault, will you, please? Of course. Yeah. This is a, in a rush. Sure. Sorry to inconvenience you, Mrs. Harris. That's all right. I'll be right back. Thank you. I wish there was some way I could talk you out of this. These things hardly ever work out anymore, you know. You don't say. You touch that button, I'll blow you away. Well, two of these people are in Unit 4. I didn't get a clear look at the third one. Call back on them. Is there a rear exit or window to this unit? No. Say, what's going to happen? Just stay inside and don't come out till we tell you it's clear, okay? Roger. Call an ambulance. Give me an outside operator. Operator, police emergency. Officer Owens, 85126. I need an ambulance right away at the Tropics Motel at 3rd and Dover. Terry. Sure, go ahead. This is Ludlow 9. Request code 3 and possible 211 going down at 1274 Market, Westside Citizens Bank. Put it in the bag, hand it to me, and see me to the door. Easy. Right there! 
there, Shipley. Drop it! Come on, come on, drop it. I said drop it! and all that, and I know I'm not supposed to talk to anybody, but I just had to say hello to you, baby brother. Wouldn't be right if I didn't, would it? Did have to turn out to be you that caught up with us after all, didn't it? You got it. Still not gonna thank me for saving your life and making you name number one hero? Two women don't have husbands anymore. Two sets of kids, little kids who need fathers, don't have fathers anymore. And another officer's wife is sitting at the hospital right now, wondering whether her husband is going to live. Do you want them to thank you, too? Oh, we better go. I'm getting nowhere with this boy. See you later, baby brother. I want your reports filed within the hour. You okay? Yeah. I'll make it. I think you will. Yeah, I saw Shipley talking to you when you were booking. He told me what it was all about. And? He was bored, left Texas on the spur of the moment, kept on going, looking for excitement. Why all the violence? Why the killing? He said he wasn't sure. Just uh, shrugged and said, for the hell of it, I guess. 